first, I also wanted to show you how virtualization management on KVM on RHEL can work through our good old friend, the web console. So I'm looking at web console right here. This is again, the one I use to manage my home lab. We go to virtual machines here over on the side and there's a plugin called, I think systems, cockpit dash systems you have to install to make this interaction work. But here you go, we've got the same old list of virtual machines that I showed you in that virtual list. So if I were to go back to ITT0, our guinea pig, for you can see that he shut off. That's because I told it to shut off before the transition earlier. And this is its layout. It's got networking and it's got its disk and it's got how much memory and CPUs and we can edit these things the way that you would expect to be able to edit them within a, a GUI environment. So just little slide bars here to give it more memory if I wanted to. I could give it more CPUs if I wanted to, things like that. You could even tell it whether you want these CPUs allocated via sockets or cores. Like I could say, I'd like this in two sockets in one core each instead of two cores in one socket. And I don't know if there's a performance reason you would do that. There might be. It could also come down to licensing, right? A lot of software is sometimes licensed by socket versus by core, right? So you may be able to better leverage your licensing this way too. Not your rel licensing exactly. Yeah, there's also some cores on the same socket. We'll do stuff like share caching or mm -hmm. share software caching together. So there are some slight performance things, but unless you're like really cranking on the compute, you probably wouldn't notice too much. So let's actually do something here in the web console. What do you think? So we've got ITT0 open here. Let's just add a disk. What do you think? Let's click add disk. And it lets me define what pool I want to put the disk in. I've got a couple of pools that are defined here, and that's the default location. We're going to give it a name, ITT0 dash disk one, because I already have disk zero, because as we mentioned earlier, all arrays start at zero. We'll make it one gigabyte and we'll click the add button. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make a new virtual disk formatted in QCOW2 format, which is also thin provisioned, so that as I write to that disk, it'll start to consume disk space. But if I, uh, before I've written to it, it should be effectively empty, very close to empty, right? So this is a, great, this is a better way for me in my home lab to be able to allocate uh, storage. So the disk is already added. If I turn the system on now, and that's another cool thing, you can see there's a console right over here, a little tiny console that's very hard to see and very hard to work with, but I can expand it here. And now it'll bring up the console. And here we are at the console. Let me see if I can remember my you login to, here. Well, to make that bigger, you have to go into some of the arguments for the kernel to change the sizing of your TTY stuff. But right. if viewing is a problem, guess what also works here? A graphical user interface, GUI desktop within this web console window too. So now I just logged in and I did an LSBLK and you can see there's another disk right there, VDB. So it was that easy to add a new disk and there it is already in my system. You can even live attach those. I didn't want to risk showing that on live <laughs> stream. But if you've got a server that's up and you just need to add disk to it, you can actually attach a disk through Versh and I think through Web Console that'll just automatically show up as though you had plugged in a, a disk, like a USB disk. It doesn't show up like a USB disk, but it's the same concept, right? All of a sudden a new disk shows up and then you can log into your system, refresh, and actually allocate that disk to whatever you want to use it for. Home is getting full. I need to add some more disk, that kind of thing. All right. Oh, there is one more thing I could show you in Web Console here. And again, all the stuff I'm showing you in Web Console is also accessible through Versh. That's the beauty of that API. We can also take snapshots. You see this section here about snapshots. Home lab example. Maybe I have my system in a pristine state and I'm about to try something new that I want to be able to revert to so I can try it again. Maybe I'm preparing for a demo, for example. Uh, I can make a snapshot right here, and you can see it automatically gives it a name that matches the host name of the, or I should say the guest name of the system, and it puts a date on it. Snapshot before I destroyed my system, and I click Create. And what this will do is it'll make a snapshot chain, even though that's a QCOW2 image, right? It can still take a snapshot of that system, right? Which was a thing I thought you could only do with LVM-based VMs, but it's able to do it, which is pretty awesome.
So now if I were to go back to that console and I don't know, let's do the famous. Yeah, All right, it's off the bottom of the screen here and I can't really see. Apparently my console is not working out well here. All right, you get the point. I could be doing terrible things, but I can't tell what it's asking me. Maybe it's asking me yes or no. Are you sure you want to destroy the file system on this machine? If we click on this, we can do that force shutdown and then it's going to just forcibly kill the VM. And now theoretically, if we try to run it again, it's not going to boot. Let's see if it makes a liar out of me. It seems to be booting at any rate. We can restore the snapshot, which is the whole thing I was trying to show you. If we click the revert button here, we can revert it to what happened, the state that the system was in before the snapshot. And that's the whole point of snapshots. I failed to fail only because the console was off the bottom of the screen.